Hi, I'm a skydiver. I want to know how strong these soft links are. The reason I want to know is because these are the only things that are holding me to my canopy. We're going to brake test them on this episode of how not to skydive. Hi, my name is Eric uh, and I swung by Ryan's lab here and this is where these go and yeah these are pretty tiny. Cool so, so explain to me starting with what is this the container yeah. the backpack? Your container yep and it goes through uh, what are called the three rings so you've got one ring it's just a ba basic lever and it goes to these risers and then the risers physically touch these and your entire line group goes through this, and that happens four times. And what is this black stuff? Ah, Coban, yeah, essentially sacrifices itself. So these don't get worn out. Cool, is that just the stuff they wrap around your ankle when it's sprained? Yep, or with your dog when they go to the vet and get an IV. <laughs> yep, same stuff. Okay, so this wears out, so you don't wear out your, so you can your soft link pretty you can much see, see right there. What kind of um, material is? This is Vectran. Okay, and this comes that in... That is a liquid crystal polymer. Liquid crystals. Hmm, yep. that reminds me of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what other materials do the lines come in? They come in spectra, which is called microline. They come in HMA, which is high modulus aramid, and they come in Dacron. Wow. Yep. Well, I Those can't, are the four. can't wait to brake test all that. <laughs> so the first skydive brake test we're going to do is the canopy to the lines and how they're connected. And what are the other ways that people connect these? They use mallions. Okay, yep. so those are quick links. Yep, quick links. And why do some people choose one over the other? Yeah, so people choose mallions because they uh, are made out of stainless steel and they're strong, but they are not always field serviceable. So, but these are, these are always field serviceable. So the question is, which one is better? What does field serviceable mean? Uh, I can take these off and change canopies at any time without any tools. Okay, whereas quick links, if they get too tight, yep. they're not as quick as they sound. <laughs> Correct. Let's examine these. Pull one out yeah. for me. Do you double wrap them? No, they're, oh, oh yes. Okay. You do make a double wrap right okay, here. So double wrap, and then is that girth hitch? What's that? That's not, yeah, a, that's not a button knot. It's girth hitched, yeah, around the little guy, this little tab, so, tabby thing. In highlighting, we call that inverted. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I'm not a skydiver. At least that's what I tell my mother. I love soft shackles and I find them fascinating when they kind of like are in other sports. And so this doesn't really seem like a soft shackle because it doesn't have a button knot or any other knot. What's keeping this from coming over the top is this green tab. And so what they do is they double wrap, which is a trick I actually wanna try for connecting uh, sew and loop to sew and loop is use a four millimeter soft shackle instead of five because the button knot is smaller. And that way we can tuck that button knot inside of the sewing loop. But to use the smaller soft shock, we've got a double wrap. So this is a super interesting test to me because we're gonna, we've got four of them here to test. You can see here that this goes through there and pull it off of the green tab. And then it went through itself. So in highlighting, we call that inverted. And then it's just double wrapped through the riser lines. And it looks like it's just an eye to an eye. You can see here that it has stitching that keeps the splice from coming undone, even though this kind of material usually holds itself with like that finger trap technology. <laughs> so double wrap. And so we're gonna test it double wrapped, single wrapped, and, oh, nope, I'm doing it wrong. I'm already gonna, <laughs> I should not skydive. <laughs> wow, the little things that'll kill you. Okay, there's that. Let's find out if we can get anything in here strong enough to brake test that little tiny eye. We are now going to go over to the lab, which is here, and if you stay till the end, we'll brake test an extra thing. So let's go. Welcome to tomorrow. Wasn't interested in braking stuff last night, but <laughs> Eric came back and label out buds so we get sponsored. And uh, so, <laughs> Yeah, we're going to break this stuff down. Let me give you a very quick tour of my super messy lab. This isn't me trying to decorate. That's all the bolt buster tests I haven't gotten to. 
And these are all very special memories. And if you want to know what this is, for example, maybe we can make a video about that. Leave that in the comment section. This is a rectangle. This is a bar. That's a slack line holding a hydraulic. And this hydraulic held back from recoil from par with paracord is going to pull this teeny tiny little tiny soft shackle and then goes to this big fat load cell to my original load cell because it was all kind of integrated into the system so now it's kind of like married into it but we're going to test um, these in all sorts of ways maybe the way you're not supposed to because yeah. that that would be interesting this was super hard by the way to get that around the two quick links now that we've pulled it a little it you have a little space but whew, this is to catch the samples so things don't go flying and uh here we're gonna have some line scale threes coming we've got some dc power so the lights don't flicker when we get some slow-mo going and then we've got our fancy graphs and here's our lodestar sensor 10,000 hertz which you do not need for slow pull tests but uh, this is my favorite load cell at the moment, so that's what we're using. And it's grape season. So what do you think it's going to break at? I'm guessing uh, 3,500 pounds. That's how <laughs> I feel comfortable using them. That's what I think they'll break that's at. That's what you're hoping. That's what I'm hoping they break at, All at right. least. All right, you guys, put in the comments below what you think. Let's do it. Oh, that was a lot less than I thought. So where'd it go? Uh, good question. And I um, see it fly. Did it disintegrate? <laughs> I mean, could this... Oh, here we go. Oh. So this is Spectra. Interesting. It didn't slip off. It broke. Cool. So check out that graph. Yeah, I love graphs. Nice. Do you know what 10.9 kilonewtons is? It's a lot. Yeah, it's 2,000-ish pounds. 8.8 .8 is 2,000 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So would you whip... Uh, I think so still, actually, now that I think about it, because there's four of those. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, plus, your body, I think, breaks at seven. Yep. There you go. So, cool. Um, how should we break the next one? The sketchy way. The sketchy way. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to wrap this twice. Mm -hmm. And basically, guys, you're supposed to, for educational purposes, go through the hole here and then over the green tab. So let me show you how to do this right. So we supposedly save lives while encouraging people to do risky activities. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. Is this wrong? Uh, no, you're right. Uh, a oh. lot of times what people do is they will pass, they'll pass this okay. through one of the line. They'll put, imagine this is one line set. Yeah. Then they'll do, this is how they set these up incorrectly 90% of the time. Oh, the, oh. That's how they set it up incorrectly. So oh. they, they don't mess up the connection necessarily, but they mess that up. That's what should that's we what test we this? That would be amazing to test. Okay, let's test yeah. that because that's a mistake we normally because that is the see. real life example that you see. Yeah, because you're supposed to go through that hole and then over the green tab because now it's like half of it. Yeah, <laughs> is strong. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's a weird one. Okay, now what's interesting is how difficult. Yeah, yeah. You might have to time lapse this because it's so freaking long of a video <laughs> <laughs> oh look there you are that's okay. the mistake in real world that's the mistake in real world well good thing you're here to show us how not to do it <laughs> okay let's connect this back up here and pull it i'm actually not gonna duck anymore that's just not dangerous not strong enough okay Oh, wow, it broke. Huh, that's less than I thought. 6.2, or that's more than I thought it would be. But that's cool. What do you think? I think it's, uh, oh, it's hard. It's stiff, yeah, from, it's stiff. from breaking. Interesting. Yeah, uh, it's less than 10 kilonewtons. But it's technically strong enough. You think so? I if mean, you I had four of those. Okay, they're yeah, mostly evenly sense. distributed. Yeah. You, you don't want to see 24 kilonewtons on your harness this would be bad let's break it straight just without being double wrapped yeah 15 seconds so we're oh yeah i don't need it okay. so let me guess five kilonewtons oh you were so close oh was i right 
Oh, uh, okay. I thought it'd be less than our last six. test. Yeah, that's uh, that's cool. Okay. These yeah, are... the, these graphs are real simple. They just go up. There's no real crazy. Uh, I think it's called deflection point. I actually don't know the terminology yet. But yeah, six point six is the same when you do it wrong versus if you just single wrapped it. Yeah. Because literally, you're single wrapping it on the one, but it didn't come off. It actually broke. So that's that's amazing yeah. what time so like, if you double wrap this because i see you guys double wrap a lot of things the it's not twice the it's not, it's twice. not twice it's not the, twice no okay. it's not twice the strength it's never just that linear all right let's just pull eye to eye now ah. <laughs> sorry i'm so <laughs> confused right now like why, what why are you confused because what what, what i thought that was going to happen did not happen <laughs> at all that's that's what slack snaps all about what all right so first of all right. nailed it you were dead three on. and a half what? was my guess yeah. <laughs> oh my god so let me explain the logic of my three and a half kilonewton guess is this was pulled straight in good splices with stitching with good bend radiuses on our quick links so best case scenario as soon as we wrap it you're technically going to get double but the problem is you end up doing this weird girth hitch around it which has a tight bend radius and any of this high techy cord stuff in this case spectra it doesn't like to take the bends very well before it starts to break the outer fibers because they're stressed more than the inner fibers and so that's why all of our samples broke here on the other tests because they were all girth hitched around this really weird green tab I'm not used to. So when you go from 10 kilonewtons to six, you're going to get more of like the best case scenario rather than a double wrapped worst case scenario. Anyways, even three and a half kilonewtons probably would hold you. So this is very interesting. I'm sure this kind of wigs people out and makes them concerned like that it's not safe. Uh, the alternative, I think, is the Malians or Quick Links. And if you pull them pretty tight, especially the tiny ones, they're going to be quite difficult to unscrew without a wrench, which means you can't service them in the field, a.k.a. when you're in the field of the skydiving place. Mm. But uh, don't you guys have wrenches in the shop? <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, if you're base jumping, you, I don't know. I don't yeah. know how many people base jump with these or base jump with wrenches. Yeah. You guys base jump with SOS things, right? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's right. It's yeah. all you need. Yep. It's just a Garmin. <laughs> so speaking of bend radiuses, you're not supposed to tie knots in Dyneema because it reduces the strength a lot. Well, what happens if you tie bigger knots, giving a bigger bend radius? Well, the load strand here is still inside of this thing right there. It's on the inside. So technically, the bend of this is actually pretty tight, even though your brain says it's a big fat knot. So... I'm kind of curious about this because we may or may not have done this style on the Sweden World Record Project. You're not supposed to do this, but we broke a lot of rules there. So let's pull this as a bonus test and then we'll call it good. This is why I have to have 20 seconds, right? Yeah. Like... Wow. That was interesting. Yeah? Okay. What was interesting about that? Just the fact that it didn't snap all at once so this is 12 braid yeah. and it and it always will break 11. interesting and then and then it eventually breaks the last one but yeah it's uh it it broke where it broke in, in this knot yeah so you can see inside of that one right where it gets pinched and bends the most is where it breaks um wow. peak force 9.5 kilonewtons and it, this is interesting how it went up and then you can see kind of what happened there yeah and then how it bounces around while that last strand is going. And this is one kilonewton, that line there. Wow. So, yeah. We'll have non-reflective graphs later, you guys. <laughs> so that held less weight than these did, double wrapped. Yeah. Wow. Okay. My conclusions from all of this are that Riggers get really mad when they find uh, incorrectly installed soft links. But what I'm realizing is that we're all going to live anyway. So 
Yeah, they seem to be strong enough in, or, or good enough, I guess. Or that's uh, not going to be the cause of... Yeah, that's not going to co- be the cause of someone, uh, you know, going in because they installed their soft links incorrectly. Yeah, it'd be a good idea if they did it right, but it seems to be super good enough. Well, maybe we can all just, if we're going to live anyways, be nicer to each yeah, other. absolutely. And, and hopefully if you uh, smash the like button, he'll make more How Not to Skydive videos. <laughs> Well, apparently skydiving is safer than my mom thought. Let's just, uh, let's go give it a try. Mm-hmm.